So, uh, um, in this game we have Mihail Yuta with the white pieces against Johan Hjartson, uh, Hjartarsson. And this game was played in Reykjavik, uh, 1987. So, Mihail Yuta not, not uh, on his like, uh, best time of his career, which was like the 70s going to 80s. So, this is the end of 80s. Uh, so Mikhail Tao uh, passed away in 1992, I believe, and so this was the last few years, last five years of his career. Let's take a look at that. Is he still playing good chess? That's what's going to we're going to see right now. So Mikhail Tao starts with e4. We have a pawns, king pawns opening, and now Mikhail Tao goes for the Spanish. Now the Ruy Lopez. Now we got a6, the Morpheus defense. Now the bishop goes back, knight attacks the pawn, but here is standard. Standard theory, uh, Mikhail Taos goes for the castling king side. Black can capture the pawn, but most of times black prefers to develop the pieces. And after rook e1, you hunt on, you hunt on the, the bishop, bishop to d3, and then you can castle. And uh, here, here things are really dangerous because uh, Mikhail Tao is inviting the martial attack now with c3. He's inviting d5. Uh, I think d5 is the martial here, right? Yes, this is the martial attack. So he's inviting that, which was not planned in this game. Uh, no, the pawn takes, knight takes, and then white can uh, win a pawn here. And then black has to defend the knight and play c6. And, and now this is really hard to play this as white pieces because, yeah, come on, I'm a pawn up. But hey, you're not developing and you're far away from developing because you still need to move some pawns and this rook is going to be attacked and the queen is going to come and the bishop is going to join the party. And uh, if white doesn't manage to play the perfect moves here, white is losing quickly in this kind of game. But this was not what happened here. Johan Jarta's son didn't go for the uh, martial attack. He did play d6. Now he's protecting this pawn and making the, the knight ready to jump to hunt the, the bishop. But now the bishop can skip. So most of times black can also play knight to b8 and reroute the knight. So let's see what's going to, going to happen here. h3 was played by Mihail Tal, just guarding g4 square. And now knight a5 was played. Uh, I think this the, there is knight b8 move here. Yeah, knight b8 is the second most played move in this position. Knight b8. So it's not that strange when, it's, when you see it. Uh, this is theory, theoretical move. Uh, knight a5 was played, bishop to c2, and now c5 is striking. No, the center, d4 strikes the center. Queen c7, and then we have... Uh, knight from D B to D two, Bishop D seven. Some people play D five in this kind of in, in this kind of position, but Mikhail Tal prefers to keep jumping with his knight. Knight F one, Knight G three maneuvers, or maybe Knight E three and maybe Knight Knight F five. Pawn takes was played. Pawn takes and Rook from A to C eight. And here Mikhail Tal keeps with Knight to E three. And now this Knight is more flexible than on G three, although he's kind of blocking his own Bishop. So there's uh, there are pros and cons. Uh, knight C six was played. And now d5 attacking the knight. And now the knight no longer can jump to d5 in the future. But he's striking the uh, he's attacking the knight. Knight goes back to b4. And now the bishop is attacked. So by many pieces. So bishop to b1 just guarding it. And here a5. You know, black is keeping with the king queen side ideas. And let's see how Mihail Tau is gonna play in this kind of position. He continues with a3 attacking the knight. Now the knight goes back to a6, and now b4 striking the center. This is Mihail, he's striking the queen side. This is Mihail Tau. No, what is he doing here? He's already uh, giving up a pawn, but it's not like that he's giving up a pawn. Uh, the game continued with g6, uh, kind of controlling f5. Let's try to understand why not capturing uh, this and now capturing uh, the, uh, the pawn. That's because the knight has, he cannot go back. If you, if you see now, the rook is not allowing the knight to go back. And only a simple move like bishop to d2 is winning on the spot. c2 square is guarded by too many pieces, so the knight cannot jump there. And now this is all over. So there's nothing he can do. The best he can do is now to sacrifice and get one more pawn. Getting two pawns for a piece. But it's not enough uh, to play this way against Mihail Tau. That's why the game continued with g6. And now Mihail Tau continues with bishop to d2. Uh, pawn takes, pawn takes, queen b7. So now the pawn is really guarded, but the queen now is protecting the knight. And the queen is free in the c7 square for the knight. And uh, Mikhail Tau continues with bishop to d3. Now he's tying. The queen is kind of getting overloaded, making having to defend. Now c4 square is also 
uh, uh, guarded by many pieces here. So he's just making sure that when the knight moves, the, the rook cannot strike the center and before pawn and so on. Uh, so knight c7 was played, knight c2, knight c2 was played. Now the bishop is free to play and the, the rook can, can uh, advance and the knight can attack the b5. Now, now this b5 pawn is a target. Uh, knight g5 was played and now bishop to e3. <laughs> okay, Mikhail Tau is just uh, improving the position of his pieces. Uh, rook e8 fighting for the a, a, a column. And now queen d2. Uh, so suddenly, you know, Mikhail Tau is just uh, stopping any attack on the queen side. The, the, the center is fixed. The center is like immobilized. And now Mikhail Tau is preparing to attack on the king's side in the future. Let's see how this goes on. Uh, rook takes and now knight takes. Knight takes, not rook takes. Because rook takes rook a8 and now you either have to exchange one more rook or you have to give up the column. So this is very wise for Mikhail Taos right now to capture with the... Of course he could take with the, with the rook, but it's wiser to capture with the knight because now you don't have to exchange rooks or give up the column. Um, so, uh, okay, you can say that he could play rook a8 now, but uh, then knight b3 and knight has good squares to go. So, the game continued with f5. So, Johan Jatarsan is not allowing uh, 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 Mikhail Tau to attack on the king's side and also threatening some nasty th stuff. Uh, Mikhail Tau continues with bishop h6 attacking the rook. Now the knight goes back to protect and continues with knight b3. f4 just uh, closing the king's side. Knight a5 now going to the queen's side. The queen is attacked, queen b6 and now rook to c1. Again, trying to overload the queen, so the queen has to be guarding here, here, bishop is also guarding there. The game continued with rook a8 and now queen c2, pressure here on c7. So little by little, uh, Mikhail Tau is improving the position. Knight from c to e8 and now queen b3. Again, what is Mikhail Tau doing? Now is he threatening some sacks here? I think so, because now that's the way he plays, right? He's always threatening some crazy combinations. Uh, bishop f6 was played, now getting away from this, uh, also overprotecting here and getting away from the, the discovered attack, uh, of the attack of the pawn. Uh, and now, now Mikhail Tau continues with knight to c6, now a nice jump with the knight, knight h5 was played, and now queen b2. It's hard to understand Mikhail Tau moves sometimes, but maybe he's fighting for, you know, maybe he's just making it more flexible. Uh, to play in the future because the queen was not happy here anymore. Uh, and now bishop to g7 was played, uh, proposing the exchange. And now Mikhail Tau wins a tempo because he can exchange and then his time to play. So bishop takes, king takes, and now he makes this amazing move, this amazing and very creative move. And according to the, the engines, this is the best move in the position. Mikhail Tau continues with Rook to c5, what is going on? What's going on? What is that? Now Mikhail Tau is the coin, the defense of the central pawn. Now giving up his rook. And here Johan calculates a lot and he plays the best move in the position, queen a6. Those guys are monsters. This is the best move in the position, queen a6, the best defensive move here. Why? Because if pawn takes rook here, now knight from f takes a5, attacking the bishop and threatening to win the queen because this comes with a discovered attack. And even if and even if the best move is played here like knight h to f6, now covering uh, the attacks, now the knight can capture on d7, attacking the queen, attacking the knight, and uh, the queen cannot go back defending, so this knight is still guarding there. So after queen a6, now knight takes c5 and Mikhail Tau has a great position. Two central passed pawns, you know, he's um, uh, exchanged down, but uh, his pieces are very active, the king is exposed. And although black can exchange a few pieces here, uh, in the end of the day, uh, white, is, white pieces are just too strong and the passed pawns, we're gonna win the game. So that's why in this position, Johan continued with queen to a6, and now Mikhail Tau takes the pawn, rook takes b5. So suddenly, Mikhail Tau is like, no, rook to c5 was, it's like game changer, you know? It's like a game changer. Now, this is the, this is the only move in the position. It's like it is a game changer like that. So this is crazy. This is crazy. Now, it's too late. And you say, and now black is thinking, where did, when did I go wrong? And, and it's too late. Now, this is crazy because now the position is collapsing. 
Uh, of course, knight c7 was played. Now, it seems like the rook is trapped. But Mikhail Tal can still play rook a5. So, uh, <laughs> instead, he plays rook b8, which is also a good move. Rook b8. Now, he's attacking now, rook b8. Another monster move. Attacking the queen. Attacking the rook. And also, you know, restricting the king here in the future. Maybe he's threatening some sacrifices. That's the way Mikhail Tal plays. Now, he's always creating like a dark forest where no one can see anything, but only one uh, goes out surviving. And th that's the way he put uh, that, uh, uh, what, he what he did in the games. So queen takes d3 was played. Uh, the queen was attacked. And now knight takes e5. <laughs> Not capturing, because the rook is protected. Now the problem is knight from c takes e5. Not only, not only sacrificing the knight, but undefending the rook. But undefending the rook. But now he's threatening the queen. Uh, the queen is attacked, so queen d1 with a check, winning a temple, queen, king h2, and now what? Now what do you do here as black? Uh, is it time to capture the rook? Not really, because knight d7 comes with the discovered check. And then after the king moves, the knight takes rook, and now uh, material is even, but this king is just doomed. White is well protected, white has a passed pawn, and the king is exposed. So, uh, what to play here? I cannot capture the... Oh, can I capture the knight? Not really, because queen takes, and this comes with the check, and the rook is restricting the king. And if king g6, queen, e queen g5 is going to checkmate combos. And if the knight goes back, queen e7 check. This is crazy, crazy stuff. Crazy, crazy stuff going on. And uh, white is just winning. White is a piece down, but it's threatening mate. And there's no way to avoid it. Unless like playing h6, but this is getting made it anyway. Because now queen h4, now queen h, queen g5. So black has to give up the queen. This is so much crazy. So that's why in this position, Johan Jartsson didn't capture the rook. Didn't capture the knight, but rather played rook e1. Threatening checkmate now. But Mihail Tau <laughs> continues now with the mating sequence. Knight g4, check. The game continued with king to f7, but now knight h6, check. Look at this beautiful job of this rook here. Beautiful job, g beautiful cooperation f between the pieces. Now the king has to go only one square, king e7, but now knight to g8, check. Again, only move is king f7, but now knight g5, checkmate. How beautiful is this? Mihail Tau against Johan Hjatarsson in, in the last five years of his career. Mihail, the old Mikhail Tau, the old Mikhail Tau playing a masterpiece like that. Beautiful game.